We are continuing with our coverage from Goldstock Analyst Day here in Florida. Joining me now is the CEO of Franco Nevada, David Harquail. David, thank you so much for being with me. It's a pleasure to be here. Lots of fun. So you gave a really interesting presentation and I'm happy to say this introduction because it's rare mm -hmm. that I say it, but you're one of the few companies that's actually outperforming the price of gold. Explain that. Well, we went public in December of 2007 at $15.20. We're trading in the mid-50s right now. Uh, with dividends, we pay on a monthly basis. We calculate we've bought a 27% compound rate of return for investors over the last five years. And if you look at the uh, gold price itself, it's roughly doubled over those uh, two years. Uh, but a lot lower. And of course, if you look at the gold sector itself with the gold operating companies, uh, they're almost flat over the five years. So actually, we're quite happy with the performance. I'm told for the GSA conference, we've been the best performer in the last five years and the last year. So what do you think is, is the reason behind your success, David? We, we have a different business model. We're not a gold operating company. What we uh, do is we don't build or operate mines. We don't explore for mines. Instead, what we have is a royalty on a broad portfolio of mines around the world, both producing and developing and exploration properties. And what that does, it gives us a participation on the upside of gold. We get increasing gold prices without the offset of uh, higher operating or capital costs. And as well, what gives us a big advantage over the gold ETF is that people find more gold in our properties. And that tends to be free gold or added value creation for our investors. So as a result, we can pay a dividend and we can give gold investors a better performance than just the gold price. So David, why do you think uh, or do you think royalty companies are overlooked then and people often just concentrate too much on the GLD? Gold companies are still relatively new. If you think the GLD was only created in 2004 and now it's become almost a dominant force within the uh, uh, gold investment space, it represents a third of the market cap of all the gold operating companies put together. Right now, the gold royalty space or the gold uh, uh, streaming space really only got us started about five years ago and in terms of, of substantive growth. And I think what's happening is an increasing acceptance as, as all the companies have developed uh, a track record of actually outperforming gold operating companies and the GLD. They're saying this is an interesting space. They're making more capital available for these types of companies. I think it's the real growth sector within the gold investing space. And David, you mentioned we're seeing more and more juniors enter this, uh, this space, the royalty mm -hmm. space. Um, uh, do you think that this is a trend that's emerging? There's a lot of you know, these micro caps, you'd say, the, um, I'd say, 30 to $100 million type of companies that are coming to the market right now, it's going to be challenging for a lot of them. There's a, probably too many trying to enter the space at once. For us, this is a game of numbers. We have right now 300, over 340 royalties, over 215 mineral royalties. And for us, it's, it's a game of numbers. The nice thing about a royalty, you never have to put more money into it. But to have a really great royalty, our hit rate is about 1 in 20, where there's a major discovery like a, a detour or a Tazius or a gold strike that occurs on one of our properties that creates those true value creation events. Uh, if you don't have that, all you're betting on is the gold price itself. And that uh, is not good enough. We think you need to have both to be really successful. So I, I, I'd be cautious in terms of just the number of new gold royalty companies coming in that are the micro cap companies. The established companies like ourselves, the Royal Golds, the Silver Whedons, or even now Sandstorm, I think uh, are, are good investments. David, you, you spoke about price of gold. I'm curious to get your insights about mm -hmm. what's happening in the gold market right now. Gold taking a, a bit of a hit last yeah. week. Uh, what are your thoughts about the, where the price currently stands? It, it, this is probably going to be the consolidation year. I'm not sure your, your, your viewers are going to want to hear this, but we've had 12 years. It's been one of the biggest winning streaks we've ever had in the commodity. It's been the biggest boom probably ever when you look at the chart of the outperformance of gold versus the equity markets. And generally, you have some sort of consolidation in these runs. And we think year 13 is going to be the unlucky year 13. We might end this year. In fact, it seems to be right now lower than we started the year. And I think it's just natural, but we still are very optimistic in the, say, three to five year time frame. David, what do you think is the driving factor there? Is it the stronger U.S. dollar? Is it that the, the crisis in Europe has stabilized? What do you think is, is playing that role on gold? 
Uh, right now, we have a couple of things. Is one the uncertainty in, in, in global economies? India has put some export uh, uh, right. tariffs right. on, and some of the hot money has been moving out to chase uh, the ro great rotation they call it into more risky investments. So I, I think right now it's it's uh, the market's looking for some direction and momentum until we get that. Uh, we probably won't see any direction in the gold price, and it's possible it's going to last the year. So, if the bull run is coming to to uh, to a head, to a stop, uh, David. No, it's a, it's a one, it's a, a consolidation for one year, but we we think in terms of decades. Okay. And so we still think it's still a great longer term trend. Out five years, are much more optimistic. It's just the nearer term would be cautious. Okay. And when you say cautious, what trading range are you looking at? You know, it's all relative. Again, with the speakers here, they talk about how it's relative to the dollar, it's relative to the equity markets. Um, I don't have a specific range to give you there. Sorry about that. I was expecting you to know the answer, David. <laughs> They're all numbers all right. at the end of the day. I'm playing more of a business that's relative value in terms of where is it better to be positioned relative to paper assets versus financial assets. I still think it's, it's much better to be in hard assets such as gold and uh, r real assets uh, going forward and uh, I'm very happy where we're positioned. David, final question. Are there other uh, metals you like besides gold right now? Um, it's, I think, all the commodities. I think uh, right now everyone's a bit scared of them. There, people have are, are, are been pulling a bit of money out of the sector. If you look at the valuations on base metal companies and industrial mineral companies, they're about the cheapest I've ever seen. And um, do I think there's going to be a real pullback in the demand? Do I think there's any excess supply coming to some of these commodities? I'd say, you know, outside of iron ore, I, I think most of everything else is, is a buying opportunity. David Harkel of Franco Nevada, thank you so much for your thoughts today. It's a great pleasure. And thanks for watching our continuous coverage from the Gold Stock Analyst Day. We'll have more videos for you on Kiko.com. Reporting from Fort Lauderdale, I'm Daniela Camboni.